Tonight, we welcome Craig R. Carey. Craig is a Ventura-based teacher, scout leader, and trail volunteer who grew up hiking and backpacking in the southernmost Padres forest. Craig is about to talk about his second edition, Hiking and Backpacking in Santa Barbara and Ventura by Wilderness Press. Welcome, Craig. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. How are you doing this evening? Well, thank you. Good. Let me ask you, um, you grew up around the Los Padres Forest. Guilty and you as did charged. a lot of hiking. You, were, you did a lot of hiking when you were young. So what do you remember most about your experiences as a child with your family? Oh, wow. You got to dig deep for that one. All right. Um, <laughs> well, you know, to, to, be, to be honest, it was funny. The first time I realized, I, I should probably give this a little context. Uh, my... My folks met at UCLA in the Bruins Mountaineering Club, right? So they met mm -hmm. on a climbing trip. And then, you know, they dated and they went on all the mountaineering trips. And that was just what they did, even when they were, you know, dating and engaged and then married mm -hmm. without kids. And so when, <clears throat> and I was the third of the boys, pity my poor mother. Um, <laughs> that was all we did as kids. We would go camping and 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 mind you, this is before like the big 1992 uh, wilderness expansion. So a lot of areas now that are wilderness, you could take your little Ford Bronco back when Ford Broncos were actual four buys and go oh. to all these super remote places. And that was just what we did. And um, the first real, well, I remember a lot of those trips, the first real memory I have of how special that was, was when some friends, I was probably like in late elementary school and some friends were talking about their weekend, right? And I didn't, I didn't really ever talk about my weekend. I just figured that's what kids did. We all went camping, right? And mm. that what kids do, mm. right? And they were talking about Disneyland and this new ride and how awesome it was. And they got to ride it twice. And they're like, what's your favorite ride at Disneyland? And I was like, I've never been to Disneyland, right? Wow. And cool. right, it's, I just, I had no frame of reference. And they're like, oh, well, what do you do on the weekends? I'm like, well, you know, like everyone else, I go camping or backpacking or my brother takes me to his favorite swimming hole and we go swim in the Cespi. And my friends are like, I've never been camping. And I was like, oh, I'm not like you. <laughs> so <laughs> it was it was kind of a like, huh. So but I never really had any want to do anything else. So my first like that was my first, you know, aha light bulb moment mm -hmm. was that um you know what? My parents are pretty cool. Um, not that there's anything wrong with Disney, but I loved that that was what they, what they gave me as a kid. Right. Um, you know, we had big dogs and a little truck and they would just let me wander, you know? And I thought that was yeah. looking back now, especially, you know, with parents tracking their, uh, tracking their kids with their little stalker apps on their iPhones and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I had those three big dogs with me, who was going to mess with me, right? It was great. Yeah. Yeah. So they let you wander. Does that mean, were you able to figure out right away directional and distance? and Or were there some kind of growing pain moments? There were. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure there were some growing pain moments. Um, I, I, should wa I, should, uh, I should be careful how much I reveal only because my dad was a surveyor and a map maker and I want to do his genes proud. And, and I okay. would love to say, <laughs> and I would love to say I never got lost. Um, but there were, somebody said it, I've never been lost, but I've been a mite confused for several days. Right. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there were some trips where we would go off, uh, off trail just to go see what was up there and, um, you know, either read the map wrong or, you know, back then, um, you didn't have GPS units, so you would have a physical liquid compass. And if you had your yeah. declination wrong and you were looking at your old 1943 Army Corps of Engineer quad <laughs> and you were off by, you know, five, 10 degrees, you could go up the wrong ravine. So I explored a lot of really cool places I was not expecting to explore, but you always mm -hmm. found your way home, right? We always got yeah. back to the truck, usually in time to run down to the corner store and literally drop a dime because that's what it called cost rather to call mom and say hey mom we're okay mm -hmm. we're on our way home you know so your, your parents let you make mistakes on your own and well, without really being too too many <laughs> without being yeah. 
a deadly or anything like that. Yeah, and I think you know, it's it's uh, wandering the forest is 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 a that's a pretty that's a pretty low risk um, exercise. You know, it's not like mm -hmm. I was learning how to race cars or cliff jump or skydive, right? Because there, if you make a mistake, you're in trouble. Yeah. I was just yeah. out a little longer, right? Mm. And, um, we knew the area pretty well and, and, uh, you know, it's a really, really big forest, but you know, as long as we're back in time for supper, right? It's mm -hmm. all good. As and, far as sites that you've seen in your young life, what, what scene strikes you the most? I mean, was it in Los Padres or was it somewhere else? Well, that's a, there's a lot. One, there's a lot of, uh, um, Shumash territories, which we won't get into that were, uh, good were uh, really impressive. Um, and then there's been places, you know, visiting family lots in Scotland and being on the top of certain peaks is all super moving. But um, actually one of my favorite places to be is in the Shumash, what is now the Shumash wilderness, um, only because it's still pretty empty. And mm. it's one of the few places where aside from, you know, the, the, uh, the Southwest Airlines flight coming into Burbank every 45 minutes that goes overhead um, where you can really just kind of lay back. And, and often when we, when we backpack or camp, we just take a tarp and a pad, you know, we don't have a tent or whatever. So you can just lay wow. back and look at the stars and, and, you know, we're blessed with such weather that um, you can get away for that, uh, get away with that for many months out of the year. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, a lot of places that doesn't, you know, even on the Channel Islands, you can't do that because you're either going to get blown away or the foxes are going to come walk across you. But in the Los, in the Los Padres, you're pretty alone. Um, mm -hmm. And and there's a and there's a difference between being lonely and being alone, right? Mm -hmm. So you can go yeah. out there and be alone. And there were there's been a few times, especially as as you know, you you get into that adulting. Um, that adulting life where there's just so much going on. Um, and when I'll, I'll backpack out there, even if I'm with my boy or with my boy scouts, even they've come to appreciate it where they're just, everything's quiet for a while, you know, and you mm -hmm. can, and you can lay, lay in your tarp and after each dinner, do your dishes, hang your food, and then just watch the stars and the occasional plane. And you don't hear the trucks downshifting on the highway. You don't hear people yammering. Oh, yeah. You don't hear people's music. It's one of the few places where it's just you and really the birds, right? And the, mm -hmm. and the wind in the trees. I'm sure there's some word for that, but it's pretty cool. It yeah. sounds like these early experiences really set your direction in life and your lifestyle and everything. Definitely um, my lifestyle. You just yeah. 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 But... How much did this put you on the course of where you are now? This and you were a scout, right? When you were younger, uh, we're were you M will be, yes, yeah, Por yeah, because you're a scout leader now, okay. Yeah. So, how much of this experience like just set you on that course? It, it'd be hard to quantify, but I'm I'd be willing to bet you know a lot of it, right? I it's when mm -hmm. you enjoy what you do right and you're not hurting anybody hopefully it's uh it's it's easy and it's uh um you get a lot of joy out of just you know keep doing it and i love to share it with other people because you see like I, I i can't imagine or I, I i didn't see what my eyes when i realized oh wow not everybody goes camping or the mm -hmm. look on my face might have been when i when my brother took me to the first really cool you know secret swimming hole but they weren't secret because you know there were beer cans and <laughs> yeah. fire pits right <laughs> but um I love the reaction I get from, especially when I have my new scouts, right? Because a standard scout troop is 10 and a half years old to 17. And when you get this little kid who's like either in fifth grade or just out of fifth grade, and he's going with the big kids now, right? And they'll be like, oh yeah, we're going to our favorite swim hole. And it's this cool little place. And um, they're excited for it. But when they actually get there and they realize, wow, I got the whole little beach riverbed, to, river bank to myself. I get to hang my hammock in these big cottonwood trees, you know, and then I get to go swimming and lay out on the sand. And it's so, it's so simple, you know, yeah. it removes so much of that clutter, especially from kids' lives. You know, we, 
we always talk about how, oh, back in my day, things were like this. Um, but really, you know, back in my day, there were no, well, there were video games, but, you know, video games weren't what they were. Nobody had cell phones. Kids weren't mm -hmm. so incredibly overbooked with, you know, running from recital to piano to lacrosse to some other sport mm -hmm. to the dojo, then do your homework and then something else. Right. We were the ones who went outside and played mm -hmm. until the lights came on some often at yeah. the expense of our homework. I know. Um, <laughs> so, so uh, to see them, whatever the 10 and a half year old version of decompression is to see them decompress is pretty gratifying. Mm -hmm. So um, you, yeah. 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 You got to experience that a lot recently, of course, with the pandemic and COVID, you know, we'll get to the book in a minute, yeah. but I, we did talk everyone. We talked about off camera, a little bit ago about what Craig has been doing with the scouts and uh, that's pretty much all the life that they had was, you know, school at home, you know, tele tele learning and scouting. So yeah. you did a lot of stuff service and everything. If you can talk a little bit about that, then we'll yeah, get to um, the book. Yeah. I mean, you know, as, as we're all aware, sorry, hold on. As we're all aware, um, you know, We've been in this COVID for whatever they said, 390 days of you know school closure, and for the the majority of that time of quarantine and and whatever you want to call it, um, you know, kids didn't have there was no church to go to, there was no sports to attend, there were no music lessons, right? There was no really anything going on for them except for school mm -hmm. online. And they, they already, I think we can agree, spent a little too much time on screen. You know, of course, here the great irony, here we are all on screen talking about not being on screen. I get it. Don't think I don't get it. Um, but, you know, so they're already oversaturated with screen time. And now let's do all their school on screen time, but not, but they don't have all those outlets that they usually have. Yeah. And so through the, through the good graces of the Forest Service and the Los Padres Forest Association and state parks and some other agencies because we stayed distanced and we used little groups and they wore their masks and i we could talk about how uh, adults mask sorry children's mask discipline is so much better than adults they're so much better about wearing masks right and wherever yeah. you are on the whole i believe a mask works or i don't or whatever the rule was you got to wear a mask for this to happen so the kids wanted it mm -hmm. to happen so bad they wouldn't even touch the mask right? They just wanted to get outside. So because they yeah. don't have sports and band and church and school and all these things with which scouting in terms of their scheduling often competes with, we had them all to ourselves. And I was like, okay, you know, and it was like every third weekend, we'd go to Santa Paula Canyon, which was closed, <laughs> which was closed to the public, right? But the LPFA would get the tools ready for us. They'd let Thomas Aquinas College know we were going to be there and they'd let us park up on the campus. And my boys would go in and they'd scrub graffiti and they'd clean up the trail and they'd recut trail and they'd pull brush and they'd cut fallen trees back. And they were loving it. And we were the only ones up there. So it was like this wow. great playground, you know, and it was, and some of the kids had never been there before. So then to get it all to themselves, that was Disneyland, right? It's better yeah. than waiting in line for the fast pass or whatever. That mm -hmm. was... Oh, they were loving it. I, and we went, I think, seven times over the course of last summer. And I had some kids who would, uh, they made every trip. And when we'd meet like this on Zoom, I'd say, hey, guys, the next uh, outing has been planned by the older boys. I'm going to talk about it a bit. And then I drop a link to the Google Sheet for them to sign up. You know, we're, we're limited to 10 kids or we're limited to 12 kids. Mm -hmm. And it would fill up in like 45 minutes. And then there'd be some kid who didn't... Um, who was out running errands or at the market with his mom or who's at Winco and he'd come home and be like, Oh, I missed the meeting. And they would call me in tears. Like, Oh, Mr. Kira, I really want to go. I'm like, sorry, I, we got to stick to the, the 12. Right. But you know, yeah. next time here's when it's going to be, they just, they wanted to get out so bad. And, and that's still the case. I have a trip. We leave on Friday morning and it is at capacity and it filled in like an hour, you know, wow. they just want to, they just wow. want to go below those, those quarantine blues off them, you know, yeah. Yeah. And well, they were very, they're very fortunate. I mean, to have this opportunity because I mean, 
all these other kids that didn't. So what you're doing is good work. So please yeah. keep it up. Yeah, of course. And it's, you know, we're, we're super lucky. We have this massive two, almost 2 million acre playground behind us, right? You know, if, if you're in mm. Piru, Fillmore, Santa Paula, Ventura, Ojai, Montecito, Santa Barbara, you know, the, the figurative backyard is this huge playground where you can just wander literally for, a, you know, weeks. And um, mm -hmm. it's, you know, we're, we're in this great position to have that. Which brings us to this wonderful book. Yeah, um, my book. <laughs> second edition. Um, scouts and non alike will find just about everything they need to know about hiking the Southern Los Padres. And if you could, before, I'm going to have you read probably the preface of your book, but if, okay. describe to somebody, like, give me a two minute elevator pitch. Oh, yeah. If somebody picks up your book and said, what's this book about? Oh, well, to be 100% honest, back in the day, there used to be this tiny little book by Dennis mm -hmm. Gagnon, right? This was the book. Mm -hmm. This may take a little longer than two minutes. Um, and um, <laughs> <laughs> and when, um, when I was a kid growing up, that was like our Bible to the Los Padres, right? He had everything very short, succinct, uh, approximate distances in some cases, mm -hmm. but it was still a great book. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was the book we, we went with. And the last edition is probably like almost 30 years old, right? Actually it is. It's a little older than 30 years old. And, you know, I graduated from college, got married, moved back East, did the whole thing, had the family and all that. And then when my wife and I decided to come back, um, I was like, oh, let's get back into it. And I just pulled that book off the shelf and all right, hell yeah, mm -hmm. I love this hike. Let's go do that one. <laughs> and it was different. Access was different. The trailhead had moved or there was a new trail or you couldn't park there anymore or you might get arrested. Now there's adventure passes, all these things that had changed. And so that was kind of my uh, the impetus to kind of update it. And uh, I approached mm -hmm. my book as like Gagnon's fourth and now fifth editions. Right. Um, but hiking in the Los Padres is is different than some of the deeper you know, when people think of wilderness, they think of, you know, big trees and bears and wolves and caribou. And that's not what wilderness is. You know, um, the Los Padres mm -hmm. is almost 50% wilderness, 47%, I think. And um, it's not wilderness, like the cinematic view of wilderness. It's, you know, preserved land where man does not remain, which is the whole point of wilderness. So mm -hmm. we've got wilderness that's scrub. There aren't a whole lot of large game animals, you know, it's just a great place to go and find solitude and kind of recenter, you know? Mm. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. How about reading that preface for us? Ah, all right. Let me, uh, let me sorry let me to spring that on you. No, it's all good. It's all good. Let me see what page that's okay. on. It's, uh, I, I was, uh, I pride, I was rather proud of myself after some time in the first edition, I could tell you what page number most things are on. Mm -hmm. Now I got to look for the preface. Oh, there it is. Me, 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 me. <clears throat> um, preface. <laughs> uh, Roman numeral 11. Uh, it's been a rough decade for the Southern Los Padres National Forest since the first edition of this guide was written between 2009 and 2011. The previous edition edition came in the wake of the damage wrought by the day Zaka T and other fires in the late 2000s and the 2007 Zaka fire was for a time the second largest wildfire in California's recorded history the damage to the trail infrastructure was huge and is something with which the United States Forest Service and trail volunteers still contend the Los Padres seems to bear a disproportionate share of fire damage this century still true and the 2010s were no exception. In 2017, the Thomas Fire tore through the Santa Paula, Ojai, Ventura, and Carpinteria trail systems. For a short while, mm -hmm. this fire held the dubious distinction as the largest wildfire in state history. Larger, more recent fires continue to assail California. In 2018, uh, heavy rains on the fire-ravaged landscape caused massive mudslides and debris slides claiming more than 20 souls, and scoured numerous Santa Barbara and Montecito front country trails from the canyons. As a result, the Los Padres again finds itself in an era of recovery. Uh, 
And while the fires, floods, strain on resources, economic straits, and other stresses with which the Los Padres contends seem dire, there is hope, rather there is cause for hope. Conservationists work tirely, tirelessly to defend these lands, and there has been a resurgence in trail access. Nearly all of the, there's an air quote there, nearly all of the new entries to this guide are historic routes recently reclaimed, largely through the efforts of volunteers and a grassroots ground swell. Mm -hmm. Conditions are reported as accurately as possible herein, but change seems to be the only constant. Double check conditions mm -hmm. before departure, hikelospadres.com is a fantastic hiker-driven source. And most importantly, please get involved if you can. There are numerous volunteer groups you can join, a handful which are listed below. All right. Now, get on your boots. Mm -hmm. Thus so, endeth our preface. <laughs> thank <you>. Very splendid. <laughs> very splendid. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, well done, sir. Anyway, did you actually go on every one of these trails? Uh, yes. And map um, that out? Yes, not all of them for, I didn't re hike them all for the second edition. There mm -hmm. were, mm, I'm going to say like a little, 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 11 or 12 that I didn't need to re hike specifically for the purpose of the new edition. Um, either because mm -hmm. they have remained fairly static or I'd hiked them recently enough um, just through the course of being a scout leader or being a dad who hauls his kids out maybe a little a little more than my teenagers would want. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them, and I think it's, uh, we were talking earlier about, you know, some of the Sawyer projects that I help with. A lot of them I was just on so often that you just you do a spot check as you hike through them like i seem to spend a disproportionate amount of time like along pine mountain ridge like the churro grande trail oh, um, okay. just it, it's and i don't know if it's cyclical or if it's related to the drought or bugs or insects or you know beetle infestation or what mm -hmm. but there seems the, the forest seems to uh, its trees seem to fall like in these weird cycles like if one mm. tree goes down there'll probably be a couple more next week in on, along the same trail and that goes wow. on for months you know and then okay now i think we're done here and then we can move on to another area um mm -hmm. so i spent a lot of time like last year on the churro grande trail helping with various things you know i'll hike mm -hmm. it once just for the sake of hiking it but then i end up going back to remove help remove a tree or to clear some trail damage you know so not all the recon yeah. is really not all of it's planned it's just uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of an organic, well, I was there seven times this year, so I know what it's like, you know. Mm -hmm. so. How long does this whole process take you to, you know, do the re-research of this book from the 2012 version until now? You know, it was, it was uh, wow, that's, that's actually a pretty in-depth question. Uh, short version. Yeah. I know, contrary to popular belief, I can be brief. S stand by. Um, <laughs> Um, originally I had just, um, uh, there, there's kind of an unspoken rule in, I don't know if it's all nonfiction publishing, but in travel publishing, that if your book, that if more than 10% of your book is outdated in some way, it's time for an update. Right. Um, and, and given, you know, Matillaha Falls had been added to the inventory of trails and the Franklin trail mm -hmm. of Carp high school mm -hmm. had been finished. And now, oh, yeah. and now Montecito hot springs is back in the public domain and all these things, um, between that and changes in ownership. And really the, the real impetus was, was the damage to the infrastructure from the Thomas fire. But even before then, um, in late 2017 wilderness press said, Hey, it's about time to do the update. I was like, great, let's get some, you know, some new photos and we'll do all that and it'll be fantastic. And I was actually uh, coming out of Judel Canyon with my Boy Scouts. We'd done a, a project where we'd replaced a San Rafael wilderness boundary sign that these bears, for whatever reason, just love to destroy. And so they, you know, they'd paid for a beautiful new cedar really heavy sign with a big steel strap around it and all that. My boys carried it wow. down and the posts and the tools and we reinstalled it. Then we went back, you know, then we camped down the Canyon. And as we were coming out, people who'd been up on the Santa Barbara Petrero and had some reception, they said, mm -hmm. Hey, there's a, um, 
I guess it was the, yeah, they say there's some really high winds down in Ventura. And one mm -hmm. of the kids actually said, gosh, I hope none of the power lines come down, right? Because that would be dangerous. And I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, little kid, you're right. Right. And that's, yeah. you don't think anything about it. Right. And then we drive home. And then that night, here comes the fire. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> he oh, was right. Gosh. So, so while I was, you know, while all that was going on and like some of the scoutmasters and some of the kids in my troop lost their homes because, you know, it was right up the street from us, you know, so we're yeah. scrambling and helping with all that. And we're, and we're cleaning up at the school parking lots and we're meeting at the, at temple trying to, you know, we're helping the displaced kind of get their belongings and get organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I completely forgot about the book or, you know, about the, the updates. And then about yeah. two months later, they were like, the wilderness is like, Hey, so just checking in, um, you know, usually it's a two year, it's a two year turnaround is usually what they give you. And I was like, okay. and I was yeah. like, Oh yeah, we're going to have to talk about that <laughs> because <laughs> the forest is closed. Right. For, and it was yeah. closed for a while. So, yeah. So how long did you have to wait before you can start up again? Well, it, it was part of it was a matter of, I, I am not the most organized guy, I must confess, mm -hmm. but I like to think I'm organized when it comes to sorting the, the, um, like, you know, I had a plan, right? I had a matrix in Excel and then Google sheets mm -hmm. where I, this is the trails I'm going to hit. And I would kind of piece them together. Well, if I hit these three trails in Montecito, it's one drive up. I'll hit these three trails, loop around, boom, right? Triple, mm -hmm. triple threat, get, get my gas money's worth. Um, mm -hmm. And I had to redo all that and be like, okay, well, while that's closed, I can go hit these trails, but then it's winter. So like the ones that didn't burn were mostly high elevation. And as we're all aware, mm -hmm. for better or worse, the Forest Service these days effectively closes all the high elevation access for like six months out of the year, right? December mm -hmm. to May, you just can't get up there. So I did okay. what I, so it's like, ah, I got six months. The lower areas are closed. I've hiked all the ones that were out of the burn zone, but everything else was, I had to wait until May for the snows to, to melt. So uh, mm -hmm. it, cha it changed the order of things. And then um, then there was a lot of hiking all of a sudden, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The first, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say for the, the, the first edition, um, when I realized the scope of it after I had pitched it to Wilderness Press, and um, there's, there's several rules in publishing, right? One is never reject a rejection, right? Never argue about a rejection, which I did mm -hmm. the first time I pitched it. They, uh, <laughs> they said not interested. And uh, I kind of broke the rule and I wrote them back and I said, you need to rethink this. And uh, <laughs> bless, bless their hearts. They, uh, they took it as intended and uh, end up, ended up going for it. But um, <laughs> when I looked, when I sat down after I kind of got over the, the excitement of, yes, we're doing this book. I'm so stoked. I just looked at the amount of time it was going to take Right. And, mm -hmm. and the places, the places that you can't get until you've walked a few days in the deep back country, right? Like, especially in the Dick Smith wilderness, which, um, people have often said, um, is, is kind of the forgotten wilderness of the Los Padres. Yeah. Um, and I was like, Oh, this is actually going to take a lot of time. And, you know, I work for a living. So the first really uncomfortable conversation about the book wasn't like with my publisher or with work. It was with Mrs. Carey. And I was like, uh -huh. I was like, Hey babe, you know, that two week, <laughs> you know, that two week trip to New Zealand, I was going to take you on. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's not happening. Sorry. I got to go hiking. Um, yeah. So <laughs> whoops. Are you still married? Uh, surprisingly. Right. Yes. <laughs> She's the same. You know, she, she puts up with a lot of absences. Before I ask my next question, I have to say you just did what any writer would want, like myself, turn around that rejection letter and say, hey, this is what you need I to know, do. I know, and it's like, I shouldn't even say that because it emboldens those who maybe should be rejected. I don't know, <laughs> you know, but I have a stack of, you know, rejection letters like this high, right? Okay. So, um, yeah, nice. that one I was just like, maybe I didn't pitch it right the first time, but there's a there was a need i felt there was a need yeah you know so when you're actually researching this i mean of course the time was a was a big shocker yeah. but what about the visuals you know how much of a change 
you know, how did that affect you seeing how much the trails changed because yeah. of this man-made disaster? Yeah. Well, you know, the, it's funny about that because if you think about change in like the, uh, you know, the glacial timeline of things, right? Mm. Things haven't changed much. Topography doesn't change much. Maybe a couple little lines that on a seven and a half minute map have widened or mm -hmm. narrowed, you know, over time, things aren't a whole lot different. Um, mm -hmm. but in terms of our access, how, how people can access it, right. Um, mm -hmm. and how a trail bed is, 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 um, accessible and tenable to a biped, right. Who, you know, doesn't just, we don't just scramble up the hills like coyotes do, right. We got We need a trail and we need camps mm -hmm. and we need, we need to have our little campfire and a place to do our coffee and all that. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's more that infrastructure that we rely upon for the, the forest to be more palatable to our, to our needs, right? Mm -hmm. So the man-made infrastructure that makes it palatable to us is really what changed. Um, mm -hmm. There was, that was the big change where I, I kind of had to literally take stock of the inventory. I had to talk to resource officers in all the different districts about, is this camp going to be rebuilt? Um, you know, are you, are, you know, you, there's a difference between simply removing a camp from the map and physically going mm. in and removing all its accoutrements, right? Um, there's, in the 70s, there was a huge contraction of infrastructure on the forest, but a lot of that was just mm. literally no longer listing campgrounds on the map. But if you hike out with an old 70s era map into the Sespe, tons of those campgrounds are still there. There's still concrete tables, there's mm. still, um, you know, barbecue grills, and you, you know, and you just walk into it because it's not listed on the inventory and it's not on the map. Mm, interesting. In regards to the book, I mean, it's very, for everybody can see, it's very extensive with maps and, and, and photos. Um, what I like really about is you, you tell people, you essentially take them on a hike with you. Try and to. What, yeah. It was what I really enjoy about it. And what I thought was really helpful was toward the front, there's a section called Route by Theme. And this is if you're searching for something, okay, I'm going to quiz you here, Craig. Oh, great. Okay. All yeah. right. I want some namaste in my life. So I want some solitude. Where am I going and, and what trails do you recommend? Oh. There, and there's ones even beyond what's in that little list that you might be looking at. Um, I spoke earlier about the Shumash Wilderness, mm -hmm. uh, the Mesa Spring Trail, which, and there's some irony to that. Is that even in the list? I don't even know. Um, <laughs> there, there'd be some irony to that because as a kid, that was a four-wheel drive trail and motorbikes were yeah. all over the place. But uh -huh. now it's just this huge, the San Amigdio Mesa is like the, um, is a, um, I think the largest unbroken cops or forest, whatever you want to call it, of um, single leaf pinion in the world, must be, certainly in the state. Um, yeah. And you can just wander, you know. So, I mean, you can find solitude a lot of places, but um, Santa Miguel Mesa and the Shumash Wilderness Trail, Sheep Camp, whilst on weekends can be a little, you get some day trippers in there, midweek, uh -huh. um, the North Fork Lockwood Trail. Okay. You find extremely chill. And there's so what, and really any, any, I was just going to say, sorry, anywhere in the Dick Smith, again, you get uh, a couple miles away from Highway 33 or um, the 166, mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to be alone. What if I want to go swimming? <laughs> well, the, it's, there's, there's two, uh, there's two schools there, right? There's the Sespe school. Yeah. The Ventura <laughs> and there's the Santa Barbara, yeah. the, the Santa Ynez. So, so obviously yeah. in, in, um, for the Santa Barbara Posse, it's Red Rocks there at the end of, um, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Red Rocks is the place to be, right? Um, yeah. And then for the uh, Ventura people, or the Ventura Ojai half, um, it's the Sespe. You know, there's um, mm -hmm. the original, what they used to call the Lion Swimming Hole back when that was a huge car campground full of partiers. Uh -huh. One of the places yeah. my mom would not let us go um, because of... Uh, <laughs> topless motorcycle riders and open containers and just chaos down there. Um, so when you're 12, you're like walking around like this. Whoa, 
you know, but, uh, you know, your mother's and like, that's no. just the men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah. And then, and there's, there's a lot of good swim holes. And now with Matillaha, um, Matillaha falls having been opened or access being there being an easement to the access. Um, mm. there's some really cool, like slot pools on your way to Matillaha falls, which I just love. I'm not a swimmer to mm -hmm. be, to be honest, but, uh, okay. my little kids are, and they love it. Matillaha has got a what, lot going you know, on. Sorry. Yeah. Say it again. I was just wondering about what, like, what about like, the the geologic marbles Ooh, as you yeah. put here oh uh, again yeah, i'm gonna see some cool stuff yeah the the SSB i enjoy for different reasons um but some of the best geology kind of opposite ends right matillaha again matillaha falls anything in the matillaha canyon either the upper north fork as you head up toward ortega hill or mm -hmm. um the Matilha Falls, because there is a lot of fractured, crazy layer geology there, a lot of mm -hmm. sedimentary layers. Um, if you're a real rock hound or fossil hunter, uh, those of you who frequent like the uh, the San, the lower San Inez area, just, you know, kind of the other side of Santa Barbara, there's um, little bits of this, you know, the mollusks and the shells that you'll find in the rocks, like along Cottom Camp and um, wow. along the mono Alamar or along the mono trail as you drop in toward um, Gibraltar um, mm -hmm. and the mono debris dam but there was a book in the late 20s so almost 100 years ago by a guy named Charles Givens and it was called Eocene era molluscan biostratigraphy of the Pine Mountain Ridge <laughs> and that is a mouthful and that's the yeah. fancy way that's the fancy way of saying hey go to Pine Mountain and you'll find a bunch of fossilized clam shells in the mountains. And I know uh, geology classes from Northridge and Berkeley all converge on certain stretches of that part of the mountain because it's such a classic, whatever you call that, like a field example of that geology. Mm -hmm. um, other spots obviously include the Topa Topa Mountains, the Ojai crowd, you know, that's their, that's their landmark, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in the far eastern Sespe, almost into LA or Los Angeles County, um, there's um, uh, Devil's Gateway, which is um, mm. actually recently more accessible because uh, United Water Conservation District and the Forest Service, here's, here's the part where my book is already out of date. Um, they've built a new trailhead that makes it more accessible than it's been in decades, uh, the Potholes Trail. Mm. Um, and th that opened like a week after the book went to print. Of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. So yeah. for for those who are, are new to the area or yet to explore the Los Padres, what kind of wildlife you know can they expect to see out there? Aside from the college kids? Um nah. uh, aside from the gauchos. Um <laughs> and I, I can say that because I'm a gaucho. You diss um, on my gauchos. <laughs> that's no, I won't. I'm not, actually that's where I met my lovely bride where she's my college okay. sweetie, so I can get away with that, right? <laughs> um, let's see. There are none of the big, large, well, there are some scary predators, but they're so few and far between and spread out over such a large area. The odds of you seeing anything or really being in danger of any predators is slim. Um, there are mountain lions, there are black bears, um, but most of them are pretty innocuous, you know, herbivores and um, maybe the bighorn sheep are the coolest thing. There's some of those out in the Sespe. Um, and um, there's a lot of deer. Really, you're, you're, when people think about animals, they're usually asking because they're worried or scared about their safety. But truly, mm -hmm. the animal you got to most be careful of is your fellow man out there, right? Um, mm -hmm before every hike my scouts do a thing they talk about hiking hazards it's just something we do and it's ingrained in them you talk about what are the things you know most common injury in the field well it's sunburn right and, and people don't often think of mm. sunburn as an injury but it is it's a burn right so the kids are you know mm -hmm. they're, they're diligent about uh their sunscreen especially those of us from the northern climbs who burn really easy i'm super mm -hmm. sensitive to poison oak so we talk about Mind, be mindful of poison oak. Be mindful of, especially in the the fire or the fire zones, you or the burn zones. You have to be careful of this poodle dog bush, 
which is um, uh-huh. it's got an adorable name, but it gives you a wicked contact dermatitis on par with poison oak. And then, you know, there's a couple other plants they need to avoid. They need to be mindful of snakes, right? So uh, mm-hmm. obviously we have a lot of endangered species that are a big deal. Condors are a special treat. Um, mm-hmm. um, and we have, to the layman, you can't really tell the difference between a rainbow trout and a steelhead trout, right? They look the same to us. Yeah. Um, but um we do, and you know, there's some badgers like Figaro Mountain. You can see badgers, which are cool. We don't need those stinky mm-hmm. badgers. And um, <laughs> um, not a not a huge list of like super prime game, but uh, there's some cool animals out there. A lot of cool birds, a lot of cool mm-hmm. king snakes, especially in the Cespi area. I see king snakes a lot, and that's cool. I love those. You you mentioned uh, man is probably the biggest danger, and I I noticed yeah. you put a section in there about illegal cannabis yeah. farms and what yeah. you, know, you have to be careful of that more than wild animals, I would say. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's when I, when the first edition came out, there was talk about, you know, there was going to be the legalization of cannabis and whatnot. And there was kind of a general like, huh, I wonder if that'll change things. If that'll, if that'll diminish the need for all these illegal gorilla grow sites out in on public lands. And, um, I haven't really seen that. Um, if anything, they seem to be a little more brazen and there seem to be more grow sites than there used to be. Um, mm. And and I think, you know, there's been some as I remember a few years ago, there was there was one right off of the old Romero Road, right above Santa Barbara, up one of the draws. Oh, and, it was yeah. a, okay. and it was a huge site. And I'm pretty sure I walked across because you know how the old road has the old what we call the Arizona crossings where it's got like the concrete mm. Um, the concrete depression for the creek to mm-hmm. wash over. I'm pretty sure once, if it was the same one, I, I'm going to take credit for this now. I remember walking and kind of looking over my shoulder saying, man, that'd be a great place for a grow because you've got all that water yeah. and nobody climbs up there. And then like yeah. a year later, they're like, oh, huge grow off of Romer- the old Romero road. <laughs> like- right. And I was like, oh, hope I didn't give somebody the idea. Um, but, <laughs> but then we also find it in places you know, so deep in the middle of nowhere, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that people get all the way up there, you know, for that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And and the engineering is, uh, you know, they've got their head pressure figured out where they, where they, they pipe it in off of a Creek and it's within, you know, three feet of, of perfect. And they've got enough head pressure to, to irrigate this whole large area. It's, yeah. it's pretty, and pretty advanced. Uh, wow. Setup. Wow. Yeah. But, you know, that's the negative aspect of, of you know, people involved in the wild, yeah. in the back country. But there's also the positive a- aspect of people like yourself. And you had mentioned off camera earlier that, you know, the one saying is, Hi-, you know, hiking unites us. Yeah. I and, can't take credit for that. A friend of I know, mine I know. turned me on to that. Yeah. Okay. But the tra- I, oh, though she says the trail unites us. The trail unites us. I love us. that. Yeah, and there seems to be a lot of enthusiasts out there, including um, a guy that is on right now. I hope he let he he comes on if he agrees. Dan, if that's okay with you, I'm going to invite you to be a panelist. Oh, oh man, they'll let anybody on this yeah, chat. Yeah, I'm going to invite Dan McCaslin here. He turns on his video and his microphone there. Or he can text me and saying, what are you doing? Get that camera out of my face. I see his camera. There's Dan. Hey, buddy. And you're, you're, uh, you have to unmute yourself now. Quick, somebody get him Dan. a teenager. There we go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> get me one of my students. Yeah. You hear me? Yep. Okay. Hey, How Dan. you doing, Dan? Good, Good to see you. <laughs> Craig was talking about you earlier. Craig, if you could relate the story of what you were telling me earlier about you've, oh, you've yeah, known running, Dan running for into a Dan. number of years. Yeah, so you've for, known Dan for a number of years. Too, yeah, so, so so for years I have felt I've known Dan for a number of years because I read all his stuff and I read all of his of his adventures and um, 
I remember there was a story at some point where uh, somebody took a wrong turn on the Santa Cruz National Recreation Trail. That is true. And uh, I remember thinking, oh, man, I think I've done that like four times. Thank goodness I didn't feel the need to write about it and embarrass myself. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but it was funny because it's, you know, how there's, and, and, and I have a friend um, who, she's a real mountain mama, and she, uh, she's uh, hiked the Continental Divide Trail and the Pacific Crest Trail and just, a great inspiration get of get, door. getting out and doing it. Um, and she has a phrase that she uses where she says, the trail unites us, right? And, and I really like that because as large as the Los Padres is, and I mentioned before, it's almost 2 million acres, which makes it the second largest national forest in the state. And that's, that's saying something because we're a big state, right? Um, you still end up seeing the same... 50 or a hundred people several times while you're hiking. Yeah. And, and it's a, it's a big forest. Yeah, big um, but I've run into several guys who I only know through like either social media or they're like, Oh, you know, I, they recognize me when I wear my mask. Right. You can still, <laughs> you can still tell it's me, right. People still know it's me. Um, and so th this kind of, you know, it's a huge area with with realistically a large population but you keep running into people that you know even out there in yeah. the middle of the proverbial nowhere and i think really there's a um it, it's it's both a mindset and a uh, we're kind of like our own little demographic where we uh we're out there and we try to get out there so often just the math says you're gonna run into this guy again yes right yes. so uh yeah. i when i ran into dan dan i was i was telling michael um actually speaking of of Chorro Grande that I was mentioning earlier right. um, I was up there with a couple of with my boy and some friends removing this tree and this guy comes hiking up the hill and I remember thinking to myself man what a sadist I hate hiking up that hill I'm a I'm a I'm a pro gravity let's go down kind of guy right <laughs> this, this guy's coming up the hill and I'm just like hey I'm Craig and he's like oh Craig it's Dan I'm like ah oh, finally yeah, but maybe. I realized at the time maybe. yeah I'd actually not met him yeah. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Cause I feel like I kind of like Dan and I we're, we're pals. Yeah. Right. Just, just on this digital ground. platform. Yeah. yeah. Right on. That was so talk about that, Dan is, you know, that the trail unites us and maybe expand on a little bit about have you've experienced the positive things you've experienced with others while on a trail. Well, Craig's right. There is a, a fraternity of, the, the long time users, uh, I love to take kids. So I'm up there similar to the scouting, uh, Craig, with my, 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 my crane school. I got deep into this because the school is sponsoring it and got to use school cars and the parents are all for it. And those wow. were the good old days. And I've been writing lately about, you're right, Craig, people are afraid. You know, it's sort of the pandemic thing and you go, but the wilderness is one of the last places you know, I would have a parent say, oh, you're going to do, all, you know, my kid, I go, really, a sprained ankle is probably the big thing that will happen, or some yeah. poison oak, but, but not, there won't be any mayhem, there won't be any, you know, drugs, there won't be any massive violence. I mean, your, your kid's way safer with me than when you take her down to LA on a trip. That's exact. thank you, yeah. that's exactly what yeah. I say. I said, I said, you getting on the freeway to get them here was the most dangerous part of her trip. Yeah. When she's we, here, yeah, she's fine. It's, she's, and we could go down this road and, and we don't have to, but it's like just being in society is way more dangerous than camping. Right. Oh, I, I, I so, uh, so once, once I get that parental buy-in and they understand that perspective, mm -hmm. then not only are the kids stoked to go, but the parents will, they'll drive a little further to get them there. They're a little more accommodating on the schedules if we got to start early. And mm -hmm. then um, you get a lot of buy-in once they, once they realize that. They'll realize. Mm -hmm. I, I have some names of people that, I don't even know them, but there's a guy named Bard who I keep running across. <laughs> yeah. And the Weaver brothers, I think one of them passed away, but I met the Weaver brothers back there and my buddy, Frank Hudson. Uh, it is a kind of fraternity of people who uh, love the present, but like what retiring out there can do. And I like what you say, Craig, about uh, our particular forest isn't so famous for ski runs or fabulous right. hunting or any of that stuff it's just yeah. a place for some solitude and i want to thank you for your book greg's great book i like oh, the color it. maps a lot i think that's yeah quite quite you know 
I'm not very good at the maps and it helps me a lot to not have them in the black and white. So yeah, the, so the same. Thing. That was, um, uh, okay. you know, that originally just to give a little backstory in that when, sure. when they were originally done, I'd laid them out in kind of a grayscale. And I thought for the original edition, cause they wanted maps in the book. And I'm like, yeah, I said, maps in books often, you know, they don't, they don't always work out so well. That and I, right. and I would never disparage another book, but like Robert Stone's maps were a little too simple for what I was looking for. Right. So to try to to, mm -hmm. try to render a topographic map or use a base layer into a book was a bit of a chore. And then mm -hmm. when they sent galleys, they looked okay, but then right. galleys aren't the same as sent it off to the printer. And when yeah, they came back, the they printer. were, yeah. yeah, and they were almost like monochrome. And I was like, oh, those didn't quite work. And so I've been, I've been hearing about that for the last nine years, right? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then same thing when they sent, they said, okay, we're going to do color maps this time. I said, okay, let's yeah. do this right. So I, you know, we got a different layer set, got a vector set from the Department of Agriculture, put the right. pr proprietary symbol set for wilderness on top of it, dumped in all my GPS data and they were great. And I was really nervous because I saw the galleys and I knew what they looked like. Yeah. And I was really nervous to see how they'd come out and print. And they're, they're a little lighter, like, um, mm. you know, like a little yellower than mm. I had imagined, but they still thousand times improvement improved yeah. mm -hmm. and, and it helps the hiker so I, I recommend that it really does and yeah. not to mention the photography is pretty pretty <laughs> outstanding i Absolutely gotta say wonderful. we're really low tech here we are a bookstore yeah but um, i i think it added a nice touch to your book um, and who contributed to these photos to your book um most of the photos are mine along with a few um you know part of the fraternity male and female and your daughter oh, cool. Grace. There's a one, a, a Grace Carey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My 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 sweet pea. This is my. Uh, okay, excellent. That's my that's my okay. daughter Grace. She's away Wonderful. at college, yeah. but she's Wonderful. a bit of a shutterbug. Yeah. Um, she and all six of my dogs are uh, frequently featured in here. And, six. Uh, uh, yeah, three yeah. at the t three at the moment, but six that regularly travel with me. Wow. Um, so there's photos of my Boy Scouts. There's photos of my Girl Scouts. Yeah. right there that's right snowshoeing at mount pinos because boy um, scouts now accept girl scouts i mean it's 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 uh right? yeah it's, it's not co-ed let's be clear on that okay good okay. Boy, boy scouts of america offers a program for girls all right good uh -huh. the, the misunderstanding is that it's co-ed and that's why some people have lost their minds over it but we'll get into that some other time right? yeah yeah hey, and then, hey dan um, oh god right, go ahead Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and there's some of my Boy Scouts. This was taken by one of our um, leaders who was hiking behind my Boy Scouts as they dropped into the pothole and Devil's Potrero um, oh. going, uh, headed toward the Alba Blanca Trail. Mm -hmm. so she was, Devil's she was, Gateway or Devil's Potrero? Well, Devil's Potrero is above Devil's Gateway. It's, it's okay. part of the same trail as you head down to that old, uh, that old tin shack and drop into Log Cabin Camp. You're giving me lots of ideas yeah. for columns. You know, I'm, I'm actually talking a lot of this. <laughs> I'm stealing. I'm stealing right from this. this. So here's good. here's a little mnemonic trick if you ever need to remember. You know, there's Devil's Gate and there's Devil's Gateway, right? The right. way to remember which one's which is the Cespi. Cespi is one word. Devil's right. Gate is one word. Agua Blanca, two words. Gateway, two words. Okay. Yeah. Bam. Great. My gift. There you have you. it. I need them. I'm old. I need <laughs> mnemonic devices. My whole life is mnemonics these days. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a couple questions here. Dan, you actually typed in your question. So why don't you read your question to to Craig here? Oh, Except probably won't have it. an answer for that one. Go I ahead. I don't know where it is, but I, I can make it up. Uh, Craig, I've I was got, interested. I've got it here. Yeah, oh, on page 82, this is something I didn't know about. As part of my work for the Forest Service, we check certain of the cultural resource sites. The one up at Painted Rock, which is a legitimate US Forest Service camping site. So the question is, why haven't they included that into, you know it's coming, into the, uh, the San Rafael wilderness because it would give it additional protection. And I know that's kind of an up in the air thing. Is that about the cattle? I think it's about the cattle. Um, not probably not my purview to answer, but yeah, it's probably due to the grazing first, yeah. first yeah. grazing, grazing allotments, right? Because right. there's a lot of grazing up there. I met second, the cowboy guy up there. He's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, second oh. is um, that road, 
you know, you've got that road, which could be a corridor, but like McPherson Peak, the Air Force has jurisdiction over a lot of that now that that's a repeater site going from Edwards to Vandenberg, right? All that stuff up there, yeah. Yeah, okay. so um, it would be great if it could be afforded archaeological protections, but I don't think it'll ever be an enclave or an exclave or whatever yeah. um, of the wilderness, at least not yet. My, um, my... Go ahead. Sorry, go yeah, so I, I don't have an answer for that, but um, it does it does need some protections for sure. Um, because in your book, you talk about heated discussion about yeah. that, that very thing. And I don't like the idea of a bathroom right at the sacred site. That seems a little bit much. And I have wow. I have yeah. bitch to the Forest Service and they're very, very nice. You know, I also want to stay in good, but that's yeah. not going to change. That's yeah. historic. Yeah, it's one thing to have a table there, but I agree with the outhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit close. And then, Michael, I saw there's some other um, yeah, yeah. questions. Would you mind if I uh, hit some of those? Go for it. Okay, for so it. Um, anonymous attendee asks, uh, for hiking the backcountry with overnights and not carrying in our own water, can you offer advice for how we can get current, accurate info on water access? Oh, That's a fantastic question, question, Mr. Yeah. or Miss attendee. Um, so, yeah, actually, um, first, just because it's ingrained in me, the whole be prepared thing, have a spare liter in your bag, just in case, right? Always have extra water. But for, in terms of replenishing water, um, if you go to hikelospadres.com, hikelospadres, all one word, no hyphens. Um, it's a hiker and, you know, outdoors person driven site where they provide um, reports. They're like, hey, I went into Upper Reyes Trail Camp. The grill's in good shape. Um, there's somebody left a tent or somebody left a propane tank and the mm -hmm. creek's got really good water right now. So if you know where you're going, check that site before you go. And, and I would never disparage our federal agencies, but let's be honest, um, with such a razor thin budget and massively critically understaffed, um, rangers don't know what they used to know. You, if you call the Forest Service the odds of them knowing conditions in the backcountry are slim and none and slim just died. So Agreed. you need somebody who's just been there and high close Padres is a great kind of crowdsource um, option for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then somebody um, with the same name, anonymous attendee, thank you, uh, says the uh, cannabis being grown in the forest is going to the East coast where it is still illegal per my sheriff's department sources. I've heard the same as well. Um, doesn't mean mm -hmm. I like having it all out there, right? So it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any others? Let's see. Um, I'm oh, get, here we oh, go. Tara. Yeah. Oh, this could be one of three Terras I've often run into. Um, getting See, the trail unites us. I'm going to say this is TC. Um, I'm getting out exploring more of the northern area of the Los Padres. Is the Brubaker Canyon Road open as a right of way? Um, First, let's qualify that the northern Los Padres is Big Sur. We're going to call this the central. But yes, I, I see where you're going with this, Tara. Uh, now, Brubaker Canyon, mm -hmm. technically not really open. Um, the best way to get to that whole stretch, like if you're looking to go hit um, uh, like Tinta or Cuyama Peak or Dry Canyon, is to either go all the way up into San Luis Obispo County, uh, cut across um, right there just north of the county line, uh, get to Kirshenman Road, and uh, so you go across Foothill Road, cross the Kuyama River, hang a south, which would be a left on Kirshenman Road, and then wind all the way down to Santa Barbara Canyon, which I think you visited if you're the same Terra I'm thinking of. Um, and then you would come through, um, once that gate's open, May 1. And when you get to the split at Dry Canyon Road, you'll hang a left, which would then be east, and you can get out to Kuyama Peak. Um, you can also access it, takes a little longer, and you're more likely to run into OHVs uh, through Rancho Nuevo Road, just short of the halfway house um, off the 33. And um, don't make the turn up to Rancho Nuevo Canyon, head all the way out to Tinta Canyon, which used to be a campground, kind of a gray area, whether or not it's going to be kept as a campground. Uh, you can refer to Brian oh. Conant's uh, Dick Smith Wilderness and Matillaha Wilderness map for... Um, how that network of trails is laid out. Hope that helps. Wow. So, uh, Craig, yeah. in closing. No, forest never closes. 
<laughs> Would you like to add any remarks or comments about your book? Um, you know what, guys? If, if you want to grab a copy, obviously support local, support Chaucer's. Um, yep. But, you know, if, uh, if you're one of the guys who usually gets his books from the library, that's cool, too. But otherwise, support Chaucer's. Um, <laughs> um, and just, you know, get out there and... Um, this these talks aren't these these talks are less about selling the book than they are getting the word out right mm -hmm. um there's some people who object to books being published and they're like oh well you know people always told me where to go and just word of mouth yeah okay that's one thing and it's different than the interwebs where people geotag sacred sites and swim holes that need to be closed oh. and things like that yeah. we yes yeah we'll, we'll not even get into the geotagging but yeah if, if people just hear about it from word of mouth, that's not enough people who are going to give a damn as these lands are encroached upon by different interests, good and bad. Absolutely. Um, people yeah. need to know what's out there. So they're invested in it and they give a damn and they're going to protect it. And they teach their kids to do the same thing. You know, if, if I weren't teaching however many Boy Scouts I have in my troop now, 55, right? That's 55 kids who later, if, are, if they're still living in the 805, the next threat that comes who will be willing to fight for it. Right. right. And I won't get over mm -hmm. soapboxy here, but if the information isn't out there, nobody's going to know what's going on back there. Right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's just enough information to keep you safe and it's enough information to make you love it enough to protect it for the next generation. And if they, if they want to reach you, they can reach you on your website, craigrcarry.net, correct? That is true, yes. Um, sometimes I've been told, Love though, the have... contact thing is a little spazzy right now. But you can also catch me. Uh, I'm a frequent abuser of Facebook's um, numerous groups, uh, especially on the, uh, the, El the Los Padres Forest Association groups. Um, mm -hmm. Most of my volunteering these days is through them bless their hearts they take such good care of me and the scouts i love them um mm -hmm. so yeah they can there's a lot of places uh instagram they can catch me there as well well on behalf of us john q public i thank you both for your dedication to the wilderness area and everything you do uh dan mccaslin thanks for joining us yeah dan great and, seeing you man great yeah. seeing you. Buy, buy craig's book his knowledge <laughs> and, is yes. encyclopedic you know shameless yeah. product Craig, placement Craig, just keep doing what you're doing. Thank, thank you thank for you, taking sir. the time to talk to us. And oh, everybody, no, thank you for joining us. And please buy Craig's book. So Support have a nice old. evening. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> thank have you. a great evening. Good night. Thanks, Mike. Night, Dan. Thanks, Night. Michael.